the, the goodness. All right, well, stand okay. by. Here we go. Inspiration, brave action, and heartwarming journeys. This is what the Louise H. Reed Show brings you. Now, here's your host, Louise H. Reed. Hello, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me this wonderful Tuesday. I'm your host, Louise H. Reed, with listeners in over 145 countries and millions of iTunes downloads and ongoing podcasts each month. I'm the fortunate host here every Tuesday at this time to explore the incredible journey of amazing people who've truly embraced the notion of taking brave, bold action in pursuit of their dreams and goals while doing good in the world. My regular listeners know I am also an empowerment coach helping to empower and equip women to live a life of achievement and fulfillment, which is why I'm so proud to share with you this collaboration I have with a social impact organization called Pearls With Purpose. They are dedicated to disadvantaged women in developing countries where women are given a hand up rather than a hand out. So for information about this collaboration, about my radio show guests and my amazing guests who you will hear from shortly today, as well as my coaching, please visit my website, www.louisehreed.com. Now on to today's guest. But let me share a little bit of amazingness with you uh, about Brian before we hear from him. So Brian Ochiang is a speaker, charity founder, and street survivor. Brian's inspirational story shows the strength and tenacity of children to overcome even the toughest beginnings. As a former street child himself, Brian has overcome the adversity of being homeless at the age of six to becoming a professional chef to helping the next generation of children off the streets. Building from his experience as a co-founder of a charity which provides children with access to education and the chance to go to school, Brian currently campaigns for children's rights in his native Kenya. The founder of Love for a Street Child, a growing voice that helps children to start a new life off the streets, he's extended his hand to those who have been previously overlooked one child at a time. Welcome yeah. to the show, Brian. Thank you so much. Thank I, you so you, much. I, I am absolutely humbled to have you as a guest on the show. And I know our listeners are in for a treat beyond what they actually can even imagine. Yeah. Um, what I know of you and what I'm eager to share with, with the listeners is certainly your, your, your journey in the overcoming of adversity. But the thing I love most about you from the moment we first spoke was you speak from a place of love and joy. Yeah. And um, that's what I actually have goosebumps. Um, I, I, this, and this is why I'm so humbled um, to have you on, on the show. Thank you. So, why don't you start, maybe rewind the clock for us a little bit and share with us um, the early starting, you know, your, your early years, because that's really what transforms us all. <laughs> and, yeah, that's true. You know, it's where it starts, is when, when, we're, when we're little, and, and, that, and that carves our path for us and certainly did for you. Yeah, that's true. So um, if I may start, like... Um, it, way, it went back where like a few years ago, like 10, 15 years ago, whereby uh, things was not well with uh, fam my family. I don't know what was wrong because I was still a child at that point. So my family separated. Uh, my dad went on his own. My mom went on his own. So I was staying with my dad at that point. Then it reached a point whereby things were not that good. Then I went to see my grandma, that's uh, the mom of my mother. Yeah, so things, uh, my grandma took me to Nairobi. At that time, we were staying in up country with my dad. He took me to Nairobi, uh, she took me to Nairobi. And uh, from there, we like, uh, I, you know, I, I was happy to be in another, in, in the city because on the other side, we we're just in the village and all that. 
But uh, when I came at uh, my mom's place, things were not right, you know. Uh, things started changing when uh, my stepdad and my mom got a, uh, they got a, a baby a baby girl, and for me I was not a bio, like uh, the son to my stepdad, so things were not easy. Then right. the abuse the abuse started from there. Like the, it was like crazy, crazy, crazy abuse. So imagine at the age of uh, four, you already know how to do some stuff. Like I a child. Um, of that age is still like you know doing some stuff you know stealing still playing with the other kids and all that but for me it was very difficult i could not go and play outside with the kids because right. it will could be beating so you would rather choose beating or just stay in the house right. and again you could not stay in the couch because you can't stay in that couch so it reached a point where the abuse was too much the abuse was too much then I just decided to run and go to the street because I thought the street was was nice. I thought it would be much safer in the street. Then when I went to the street, it, again, it became too much. But I was like, I cannot run again. I cannot go back home. I'd rather die on the street than go back home because what I went through home at home, it was it was crazy. It was like they didn't want me alive or they didn't want me in their lives. So I just decided I'll just be on the street with whatever it's going on on the street. Then from there, I started living on the street at the age of six, which uh, it was very hard for me. And because I was young, then I was I got introduced into drugs like sniffing glue and um, using different drugs and all that. Then I got addicted at the age of seven. Imagine um, a young child getting addicted in different uh, types of drugs like cocaine, smoking bang, smoking cigarette, just for me to stay warm. Because right. on the street in uh, on the street in Nairobi and especially Africa, uh, we they just sleep outside. It doesn't matter when it's raining. It doesn't matter what is going on. You just sleep outside. Then um, at the age of six and a, seven and a half, that was like between eight, uh, the age of eight, that's when I got um, uh, sexual abuse and it was very painful until today. I've, I'm still fighting over it because it killed me. It killed me like um, this is something that is going on on the street and we are still, you know, you still see them there because they, they don't have anywhere to run to. They don't know who to go to. So at the age of 11, uh, after staying on the street for seven years, I got rescued and uh, it was amazing. Like I felt, I felt like someone want to care and love me. I, I needed that love, yeah. which I've, I, I never got from anyone. So these people came in and uh, it's made in the street. They came in and uh, they helped me out and they clothed me, they shared love. They, and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> this is it. This is home. This is what I need. And uh, they told me this will be your home. It's a decision for you to make or to run and go back to the street. Okay. And for myself, I, uh, like when I was on the street, I started praying when I was on the street. I told God, God, when you move me from this situation, I will never, ever stop serving you because I just needed him to come in the, in the middle of everything. Then it reached a point where God answered my prayer. After seven good years of praying, mm -hmm. God answered that prayer. Because uh, that's when I, understand, I understood that uh, whenever you ask something from God, it doesn't come immediately. He wants you to know that uh, mm -hmm. I'm the one who gave you this. So I was rescued with this home. I stayed there and uh, they showed me love. I could now play. I could now do things that I could not do when I was young. Then... It was just overwhelming. So after after there, I decided to. They took me to. Uh, they do basic education. So which I I got enrolled with education. Then I decided I want to do cooking. Because I was that was something that I loved doing, even though I, even though I was sleep uh, on the street. So it reached a point where they said, you know, yeah, you want to do cooking and all that. Most of my like most of my cooking career, I have learned them from YouTube. Mm -hmm. 
because, <laughs> I remember you saying that. <laughs> talk about resourceful. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, on YouTube, you get everything you need. Like, <laughs> you want to be a great chef, you got it. Because nowadays, all chefs have their own channels. Like, my favorite chef is Chef Ramsey. <laughs> yeah. He have his own channel. He's, he's a very good chef. <laughs> and he, he always inspired me to be like, I always wanted to be like him. But it reached up, like, uh, from there, where I could go to his, pay, his, um, his YouTube channel, see what he's doing, try and do exactly what he's doing. And from there, it became like a, a habit. Then I decided to give back to the home that rescued me. I worked there from 2010 to 2014. Wow. Just to give back. I just wanted to give back to that home because they did so much. And yeah. those people that um, sponsored my education, those people that sponsored my feeding and all that, and I, I, I felt happy. Then from there I decided, you know, now is my time to go out and experience how outside is then it reach a point where um, people are so judgmental but mm -hmm. they judge people without even giving them a chance yeah. so i sent 165 cvs which i could i didn't have money to print the cvs i could i was just struggling i i, I sent 165 cvs and none of the 165 companies that I send my CVs, no one called me. And they were like, I, I think I did two interviews which did not go well. They told me, oh, you're from the street, you know, you'll be stealing from us. And I was like, no, yeah. I'm, I just want to work. I just want yeah. to, to do something. Then I gave up uh, of looking for a job because 165 CVs is a lot. Then from there, I decided to start a small business of selling. Uh, a lot of people know them as chapati, but they're kind of tortillas. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I could make tortillas in the morning, like uh, chapatis in the morning, and uh, sell them for people for breakfast and all that. Then I could do that. I could sell coffee in the evening. Just you buy uh, a big uh, flask of uh, then you make your coffee you put them in then you sell them at uh, 10 shillings per cup so it reached a point where i gave up everything was just bad i lost a lot of my friends the people that i knew that they were my friends my best friends all of them i don't know where they went so one day i was just sitting in my my place i was renting an uh, iron iron house at night it was very cold in the morning, the, in, uh, during the day, the house was very hot. It's like an oven. So you switch. So mm -hmm. that time I decided I, I would just stay in the house and I won't do anything. And I just talked to God and I told God, you moved me from the street. Don't give up on me now. And in the evening, I got a call from my friend. He's a very good friend of mine. His name is Ang Lee. Um, we were just talking and he was like, yeah, Someone will call you tomorrow in the morning and all that. Then I, in the, the next day, I got a call. Hey, Brian, we need you. And I was like, you need me? Why? <laughs> then I went to Ocean Basket. It's a seafood restaurant. Yeah. I met my former boss, um, Yaniv Stanley. Then he was like, mm, we want to offer you a job. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> do, I need to, do I need to come with my CVs or... And what my, my former boss told me was like, the papers will not work. Yes. The only thing that is going to work, it's you. And yes. that's why I need you. And I was like, thank you. I've been so, looking for this for so long. A lot. So I, I, want, I know that the story continues and I want to explore that shortly, but I want to just ask you a few questions, if I may, about some of right. what you sort of just shared. You know, I hear, as, as the listeners will as well, this, this underlying theme of spirit and mm -hmm. perseverance and positivity. Yeah. Considering 
I would say I, I have those same qualities, but I got them because I, because of my upbringing. I know that to be true. I know yeah. where that came from my parents, that came from my environment. You mm -hmm. didn't have that. So where did yeah. this come from in you? Like, you know, well, well, I was like, um, for example, when, when I was on the street, I didn't get any, I got love from the people that I found there. Okay. Then I was like, oh, even though they are, they are still on the street, they have that family thing. You know, they have that love, even though they don't care about where they sleep. They only care, the only thing they care about is one another. Right, okay. Then from then I knew that this is my family. This is what I need. Then when I was rescued, I knew that, okay, for me to be able to rescue one person, I need to be this person. So it was like a change. I didn't get that love, but for me, I wanted, since, since uh, I joined uh, the, the school, I wanted to give out that love to the people that have never gotten the love just to share with them, just to have time with them and show them no matter what they did, no matter what your family did, no matter who wronged you, we are here to show you that love. I, and, I think it's beautiful. It's, it, I, I, I'm, I'm brought to something that I say periodically is that it sounds like your pain became your yeah, purpose. Exactly. And... Yeah. It, it, and what a beautiful, um, we got a beautiful way to turn something that is so evil into something yes. so positive and, 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 and joyful because there are people in the world who struggle with being able to do that. And you did that exactly. as a young child, which is what I find so incredible um, about, about you. And and your spirit is, is so full of joy and you radiate love in all that you do. Yeah, like, you know, on the street, like um, they always talk about their dreams. When, they, when you talk about your dream on the street, people are like, people don't take you seriously. Like yeah. people don't, if you like, for example, when I was on the street, we could talk about our future kids, our future home. You just imagine that. Yes. Then, from that, we share and we make things like um, what made me to love my family that were on the street is like what it doesn't matter what I have, even though someone gave me a small uh, queen cake or something or fries, will come and share all of us, even though someone will have a piece. Then I was like, why, why are they like this? And when they, when we have a lot of people that have more than enough, and they cannot even share. But these don't have, they don't even know what they will eat the next day, but we'll share what we have on that day. Then when the next day come, we'll know what to, we'll know what to get. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's, 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 it. that's incredible. So when you were, uh, you mentioned that when you were rescued and in the home, um, that's when you knew what your sort of bigger purpose was going to be and you wanted to give, be giving back. Yes. Um, and then you were telling us about how you went to the University of YouTube and <laughs> learned, <laughs> learned, yeah. how to, learned how to be a master chef. So tell us now, bring us back to where, you know, you got the job and you said, I don't need to submit my CV. And, and the answer was, no, we, we want you. <laughs> Start to tell us a little bit about what happened, what happened next. Yeah, when my former boss like told me like, ah, oh, we want you. We don't want your papers because papers are just papers. They yeah. just been printed on a machine then. Yeah. So he told me, I want you to choose where you want to work. And I was like, <clears throat> this is what I'm talking about now. <laughs> like I, I have never had experience in a restaurant before. I've never had experience in a seafood before. So they told me, he told me now we have kitchen, we have cold kitchen. I was like, cold kitchen exists? I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him I want to start with the salad because, you know, salad is easy to make. Yeah. Then uh, what I was doing, because the restaurant was opening at around uh, by nine, then it go until midnight. So I could work extra hours just to learn because 
it, it was kind of a gift to me. Mm. Then from there, I started like, you know, working and within three months, I was promoted. Whereby I was like, oh my God. I was just told, you know what, we are giving you, uh, we want to take you to the next level. I was like, okay. <laughs> then from there, that's when my, my boss told me like, uh, we want to offer you to give you a skills that will help you in the future. And I was like, okay, which skills are we talking about? <laughs> then, then that's when they made, they trained me to be a sushi chef, uh, sushi chef whereby I could do Japanese uh, food and all that. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from there, from, then while I was in the kitchen every day, I wasn't like, yes, I, I wanted to hand money. I wanted to be the great chef in the world. Like I wanted to, you know, to be like Chef Ramsey. But mm -hmm. uh, it reached a point where it was not working. It was my dream to be a chef, but it reached a point whereby I could go to the street every Saturday, share fries, uh, French fries and all with the kids, with my friends that I left on the street. And it could be my happiest day. Like we could ha be happy, laugh, and you know, you'll see them smiling, happy, dancing, and they, they don't know where they will sleep next. Okay. But for you, your duvet, you know, you're gonna have your hot shower and all that. It's waiting for you at home. Then I started, like saying, I just want to go back and help these kids because they have dreams, they have futures, and all of them can do well in school. So I told him, I started talking with my boss, like, you know, one day I will leave this job. And he was like, Brian, you're not serious. <laughs> Brian, you're not serious. Because it reached a point where I just wanted to leave and go back to the street. Wow. And help those kids. Yeah. So it, 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 I started saving because I could not live without me saving. I started saving. So I moved from the house that uh, I had then to a cheaper house so that I can save and help because there's no way you can just say, I'm going to help then you don't know how you will help yourself and all that. Yeah. So I saved then uh, in 20, um, 2015, 2015, I told my boss, I want to quit. And he was like, why? I'm like, I just want to go back and give back because I feel like you guys don't give me much time to, to go and give back. Because sometimes you just see the waste of food that have been thrown out in the evening and they cannot even put them because I came with the idea, this food that, uh, because you can't sell what you sell today, tomorrow. Right. What you, I told them, like, put them in a place. I myself will take them to the street. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you know, what is, we are taking record and all that. And I told them, now is my time to leave. I just want to leave and go and do something else. I want to go and give back. I want to go back to where I came from. Mm -hmm. And I keep on giving my, my letter uh, to resign <laughs> and keep on putting them in the dustbin. And I'm like, then, I was like, okay. Then one day I just sit in my house and said, I'm not going to work. Then I started, uh, Love for a Switcher was going, but it was not like something big. So it reached a point where I said, okay, now I'm going to focus on the street. We started feeding program every Saturday. Then the feeding program became something a bit. Then the kids could come and talk. I could share with them my story, how I how uh, I made it in life and all that. And we could be just happy, laughing, dancing together and all that. Then I felt like this is where my happiness is. Wow, so I wanna pause again here, Brian. I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, a truly, truly amazing um, story, um, both what you have overcome, why you wanted to do what you currently do and then how, how you went about going, um, achieving it. But mm -hmm. listeners, no doubt, have been in a situation like yours where they're teetering on the brink of change yeah. and trying to decide, do I, don't I? And once people decide, yeah, I'm going to jump, it still is no, you still often um, overcome with feelings of fear or all sorts of things that may prevent you from, from, yeah. from actually leaping. Um, considering what you have been through, 
Mm -hmm. what, you know, do, what, what advice would you have for people? Because you've been through it many times, and specifically just now you mentioned when you were handing in your resignation. Yeah. You know, what, if someone is feeling fearful, but they know something better is waiting for them, what strategies, what did you do? Like, what, what do you have to offer someone or some guidance to those people who may be challenged right at that junction in their life? Yeah, like, you know, challenges will always be there. Like, you know, people will be always afraid to do something. And whenever you feel like you're afraid to do that, that thing, because that way, you're, if you feel like what you're doing right now is not what you feel like, this is my future. You need to make a decision whereby you know that this is what I want and this is what I will go for. I know all of us are, all the time, we are always afraid of taking that step, mm. taking that one step. And believe me, if you decide and you made up your mind, like this is what I'm gonna do, and you have already seen on the other, you have already seen the other side. You just, you just, what you need to do is not think twice. You mm -hmm. don't have even to ask yourself some question because those questions will be like, what if it went, it goes wrong? What if, don't put what if. Put like, what you need to do is like, I'm going to make it, it's going to work and I'm going for it. So no. you just need to take that step, you know, be like a baby because when you're doing that, it's like a, a small baby that is trying to walk. Mm -hmm. And the baby will not give up. Because if the baby give up, the baby will not learn to walk faster. So the baby will try, the baby will fall, the baby will cry, but the baby, in, it reaches a time that the baby will walk without someone helping that baby. Mm -hmm. So you need to take that responsibility of you going to that thing that you want to do you go into that thing to the next level. And by doing that, you need to stop worrying about tomorrow. You need to stop asking yourself some question, what if? Do not put what if. Go, go for it and you'll see great things on the other side. And, and is that, and so, so continue us then with this journey because it sounds like you were just starting to tell us a little yeah. bit about the other side. So you, you didn't listen to any what ifs, so perhaps what ifs didn't even come into your mind. You just, you know, you decided what you wanted, you yeah. knew what was right, and you followed your purpose. And see, he, here you are now helping these children. Tell mm -hmm. us um, a little bit more about how you're doing that and what that experience has been like for you. Yeah, before, before, I, before I go there, like when you say like, um, you follow what, you, you follow your dream, like you follow, you go to the other side. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you love people that will always want to see you on the same position day in, day out. They don't want you, they, you know, you're not afraid, but the people that make you afraid are fake friends. They, they say you're friends and all that, but the advice they give you is like, what if you go and this is not work? What will you do? You know, but you'll have a few friends that will always tell you, maybe one or two, that will tell you, you need to do it. You need to trust yourself and do it. Those are your friends. But the people will be like giving you a lot of bites, a lot of some, you know, things that are not helping. Put them aside and lock that door. Put them in, in a room and lock that door because they are not helping you at all. They just want you to be sitting in the same position mm -hmm every day in day out they don't want you to pro to go for your dream but what i want to tell uh for my everyone that is listening is that whatever you want to do now if you find even one person telling you 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 will make it just take that step you will see what is you know you rather try then you'll see what it will happen than have a hundred people telling you you know you know a lot of people follow numbers Oh, you know, you are the only one telling me this, but a lot of my friends have been telling me this will not work. Those are not your friends. Yeah. This one person is your friend and this person care for you. The other people, they don't care. They just want to see you follow and not following your dreams. I, but I, for, I think it's, it's, it's so accurate what you're saying, Brian. And I think the hard thing for the people I know I experience this myself is when it's your family, that is yeah. also keeping you small. Exactly. And it's coming from a place, 
they it's coming from a good place in those individuals but it's not serving you yeah. and so surrounding yourself i totally agree with you surrounding yourself with the people and things environment whatever everything surround yourself yeah. with people and things that lift you up and help you achieve your dream exactly because imagine you're in a room where it's locked but the only thing you can see it's the walls those are those friends that don't want you to go to grow yeah. You need to be like where you can see everything around you. That those are like those are like that person that wants you to succeed. But if you are in a wall and you can't see the other side, those yeah. are the people that don't want you to make it. But when you're in an open place, you can see the other side. You can smell the good, um, the good air and all that. Those, those are the people that want you to succeed. Like for me, it's, it it was hard for like two years. People are like saying it will never work, it will no go, it will go nowhere, you'll come back in cooking and all that. But I told myself, if this is what I want to do, I need to lock that door. Mm -hmm. And yes, they will be, I will be listening to them, but it's, it won't be written on my forehead like, yeah. oh, you know, but, and for them right now, they are seeing what I, the decision that I made a few years ago. They're seeing it right now. They're like, okay, so you are wrong about this. <laughs> you need, so all, every listeners need to know that uh, if you feel that the environment is holding you back, you need to go to another, like, mm. take a step, you know, take a step and make a decision that, okay, this is what I want to do and I'm going to do it. Oh, you're giving, oh, you're telling, oh, it will not work. Oh, I know. I, but you know what you, you, what you need, you know. You'll just be ignoring them. They will get tired. They will be like, oh, he's, he doesn't listen. People will tell you, don't listen. He's rude. He's, he's one, two, three. I think a lot of what will be coming in your, in, in your head. But you know, don't let I, those... I've also, yeah. I've also learned that I am um, selective in who I share my biggest dreams with. Exactly. Because, you know, a lot of people, they will give you a lot of, you love a lot of stress. You love a lot of depression because what you are, uh, they are, one half is telling you this, the other half is telling you this, you're in the middle. Only one yeah. person. <laughs> so for you to do that, for you to say no, it's your life, it's your decision. They will not, you'll not go begging for them. You'll, you'll not go asking for them. What you need to do is look straight. Go to a straight line. Don't go to a bending line like, okay, do this, do this. You'll be the one that's suffering. For them, they will go back without stress, without yeah. anything. So you need to focus in what you want to achieve in life and go for it. And believe me, it will work out. Yeah. Because yeah, I believe it. You believe it. And that's it, isn't it? It's, it's having yeah. that strong belief, surrounding yourself with the right thoughts and people exactly. and environment. Um, one of, I remember one of my coaches said to me, stay in your own lane. Exactly. And that was, he was saying about focus. And that really helped me, um, you know, because there's lots of ideas. There's, there are lots of shiny objects. There are lots of new things that can catch your attention that potentially take you away from where you want to be going in your life. That's true. And uh, while I think you need to be open to other possibilities, it's something that still, ha if, you are, if you take another slightly different path, it still has to be taking you towards your bigger, your bigger dream. And it's very easy to be distracted in the noise of today's society. Yeah. So like, like for me right now, I'm doing, what I'm, do I'm, I'm doing what I love, what makes me happy. Still, there are people that talk. Still, there are people like saying, oh, are you sure? And I'm not... I don't spend time telling them, you know what, yesterday I did this and it worked. No, I want them to see yeah. by action. Don't yeah. waste your time listening to them. Don't waste your time talking to them. They'll always waste your time and give you some bad ideas, you know, yeah. So you said to us that Chef Ramsay at one point was sort of the person that you were looking up to. Who inspires, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who inspires you now? Like right now, the person that, um, um, I have different people that inspire me. Like I have a lot of people that I'm looking, um, I'm looking into. Like um, 
Uh, okay. The first person that I'm looking, they are not, they're no longer with us. Like they're no longer with us, uh, but I'm still like, okay, I want to be like this person. Yes. Like you see, um, Nelson Mandela yes. did a very great thing in the country. And if you come to different stuff, we have um, Kofi Annan. Kofi, Kofi, Kofi Annan helped a lot of people and they are trying to do a, a small things at a time. And um, again, a lot, I have a, lot, a few friends that usually tell me, Brian, you know, what you're doing now is not, you're not doing it for you. Mm. You're doing it for another person who you don't know, who is not your family or you're not related in any blood with anything and all that. So I'm looking for, I'm looking in different types of people around me and seeing what they did in the country, in their own country, I'm asking myself, what will I do? I don't need to have a lot of power in being the government, um, being a government position or being a, polit being a politician and all that. What can I do to my own country as a young person, you know, to move on, you know? And a lot of people that inspire me is uh, missionaries. Mm -hmm. They take their time to come to a country which they don't know anyone about, they don't, they know nothing about, but their focus is to come and give hope and future to a child that they have never met, they don't, they know nothing about. Those are the most people that inspire me because they take their time, they resign their job, they take a decision they said, we are going to Kenya, we are going to South Africa, we are going, and they do a lot of things. They do a lot of things whereby when you see what they are doing and what they are talking about, and you're like, this is what I want to do. This is what, this is now me. I don't need to wait for a missionary. I want them to see, oh, this guy is doing this. Now what can we do together? They are doing so much in African countries whereby I salute all of missionaries in, in this, in Africa, in the world and all that. Yeah. And, and as do, as do I, um, the first time we spoke, Brian, you yeah. mentioned that, um, sort of thing to me and you said something that stuck with me since we spoke and you said, I want to be a missionary in my own country. Exactly. Because, you know, we, a lot of people said, uh, a lot of people usually say, and it's still happening in Africa, like helping someone, is, it doesn't have to be a black person. There are young people in Africa that is making a difference in their own countries, mm -hmm. but they, have, uh, they don't have that, they don't have a lot of support because the people that they are helping, some of them are, you know, like, uh, if I may say in Kenya, there, we have a lot of people that just waiting for missionaries to come and start something so that they can go in and do something. But for me, I decided to myself, if they're coming to this country, what have they seen in my country that need to be done? Let me do it. For When they come, they will be like, oh, this is already going on. Mm -hmm. I want to be a missionary in my country. And maybe in the future, I'll be a missionary outside my country, just helping homeless people, needy kids. And I don't know, I just want to be helpful to anyone that needs my help. So tell me a little bit about the work that you do now. And, yeah. and I, I really am interested also in hearing how others can support you in your efforts. So my greatest listenership uh, mm -hmm. is in the United States, is in Canada, yeah. is in the UK. I do think that there is a movement in business. I have seen a movement mm -hmm. and a shift in business um, yeah. in that there's a recognition that we all are one yeah. and that businesses, when they do well, they need to serve. And exactly. so I'm saying, giving this bit of a backstory because I want to, un I want you to be able, I want you to answer the question in the context of knowing that there are listeners yeah. who may very well be looking for a way to support an organization that aligns with their own 
corporate mm -hmm. mission yeah. that allows them to do good and give back in the world. So that's kind of where I'm coming from when I really want to know certainly how you're serving, but in the context of, of the listeners who may be looking for um, a way to, to service and offer support. Yeah, like, you know, well, uh, before, like, when I started feeding, it was just, in my mind, it was just give them food and that's it. Then it came a point where I, I decided, instead of, I asked myself, will we be just feeding them? Because you give them food, but you're not helping. Right. That is not, yes, we are, we are helping them because they were angry, but something else, something is big is missing. Something huge is missing in their life. Then I met that's more sustainable. Yeah, I met um, then uh, I met uh, my partner right now. Um, her name is Hannah Rose. She's very she's amazing. She's, Hi, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to her. Friend. Yeah, she's she's listening right now. <laughs> Yay! Hello, hello. Yeah. Lovely to meet you so, on the internet radio waves. Yeah, because I wanted a person that have a heart uh, like I do. Like, not a person that will be like, why are you helping that kid? Do you know them? I wanted a person that is ready to, to take that step, is ready to go with me to that step. And I'm lucky I found her. So, yeah. And um, for us, what we do, like right now, we decided, for uh, we decided like, this is what we want to do. We want to be feeding the kids and helping the kids, uh, taking the kids back to school because education is m the most important thing you can offer to anyone in the world. It's so a key we to decided, your future, isn't it? It's a key to your future. Yeah, mm -hmm. because without education, they don't have a future. I saw that myself yeah. because if, imagine if I went to university and all that, it will be like snap of a finger, I have a job or something. Mm -hmm. But we decided we need to focus in education. We'll be feeding, we'll be, we still do feeding programs and all that. But the main thing will be like, on our feeding program, we'll be seeing who we will ready to go back to school, mm -hmm. who is ready to change his life, who is, because we don't want to force them. We want them to make that decision. Because if you force them, we'll not be helping. Yeah. We want them to be like, we want to go back to school. We want to have a good future. Then from there, we go to that line because Right now, the kids, we have kids in school. We have three kids in school, but uh, they are not from the street. Um, whereby, Anna started sponsoring the kids well before we met. And I, I saw like, oh, you're doing amazing thing. You came to Kenya, you started helping kids. She started sponsoring those kids when she was 21. Wow. Which, which is amazing. Like, I found out like 21, that's a good, that's a, that's a, young age you, yeah. you need to be and so we decided like we want to take kids back to school and where that's where we created another uh movement because it will not only be street kids because we have needy kids we have kids that even cannot afford their school uniform we have kids that even can their parents cannot afford ca cannot afford pencil to write or something these uh basic things so we decided to start an, uh, a new uh, foundation that is called Ndoto Zakupa, means dreams of flying. Where, because we know their dreams will be always fly. Right. They will be having good, like they will have good future and a future full, full with um, happiness and joy. And uh, for us, we're not looking for like, okay, anything in return. We are looking, our what we are looking for in return is are they going to school that is what will make us happy because the kids right, right now in school uh they are they are doing so well uh two of them are in class five which is uh in kenya we go with classes is class five um the last one is in class two which they are doing amazing whereby i i, I told myself and my partner is like what if, what about two years to come? How many kids will have opportunity, the same opportunity like these three kids have? Yeah. How many kids? You know, we, we just want to bring young people to know that these young companies, anyone, that it can work. They can do so well. 
Don't listen to people that tell you, oh, they cannot, they're on the street, oh, they cannot, they're on the slums, oh, they cannot. Try it and see, they will do so well. And let us stop listening to those people that said it will never work. They will never learn. So what's you know. the best way for someone who may be listening now who's interested in learning more, who, what is the best way for them to help? Yeah, like if you like, we always open doors for people to learn I'll, because a lot of people just want to know what am I getting in, what, are, what am I getting myself into? Yeah. Is it? Yes, because you cannot just go in and you, you, know, you know, okay, that door is written, do not enter, but you just <laughs> want to see what is in the, the other <laughs> side. <laughs> so um, we have a website whereby we're still, we're still waiting for our papers on the government side. Africa. This is Africa. So we, we are still waiting for our registration to be done. So from there, but people can still visit the website. It's, um, it's called Ndoto Zakupa. Ndoto Zakupa. That's a N, N D O T uh, O Z A P oh, K K. -E. So I go, you know what? You know what, Brian? I'm just going to stop. I'm going to put, I'm going to get the website from you and I'm going to put it okay, in. Okay, no problem. So it'll no be in the problem. podcast show notes. So we'll put no, all the contact information. Yeah. No problem. Sorry. So if you want to, you can just visit the website. We'll tell you uh, everything about it. We'll tell you what you need to do and all that. But for us, we just want people that it, they are ready to go in, with, in that line with us. They yes. are ready to help. Even though you'll help a child one month, you have done something yes. important to that child. Yeah. So our doors are always ready to take you through what is going on in the street of Nairobi because we know we have not had it from anyone. I have been there. I know what they're going through and I see it every day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so what are your big dreams now? My big dreams is uh, to see as many as possible kids going to school and having opportunity of education and uh, I found like that is the dream of my partner too. She wants the same to the kids. She, she wants to love them. She wants to take them as our own. We are not looking to build, to, to have a, like a, what, as people say, a children's home. We are looking to build a family because a children's home, that is like, oh, they are from the street, oh, they are from, no. We want to build a family. As many as possible kids are in school, it's, it will be our joy, it will be our happiness. Seeing them graduating, imagine taking a child from the street and seeing them graduating, having their first job, renting their first house. It will be my joy and I know it will be my partner joy too because we want to see amazing happening, happening in their lives, yeah. And so all of, you know, that's a wonderful dream. And I yeah. know that the two of you will be successful. And I'm so happy that you have found someone who aligns with your vision and your dream. Because I think- She's much, amazing. And, oh, I'm, I'm just <laughs> thrilled. And, you know, we, we, the impact that you two can have together is much bigger than you would have indivi as individuals. Yeah. So, um, you know, all that to say, and I recognize you've got these big dreams that I know you'll achieve. What's the accomplishment so far in your life that you're most proud of? Like, my, like first, my accomplishment in, in, the, in this, at this, at this moment is like, um, we now have a program that is running every public holiday. Because we decided, uh, we, we sat down and talked and said, we can't do feeding program every day. Mm -hmm. because like you see like Christmas and those holidays people that people spend time with their family but what about those who doesn't have those who cannot afford what are they doing at the, that point that's when we came up with the idea of doing feeding program every public holiday which we have one that is coming on the 25th of Christmas people a lot of people in Nairobi said it, why are you putting it in Christmas we just want them to celebrate Christmas because they are part of our family. And that is a big achievement that we have done. And the big achievement that we have, uh, again, we have done is um, the, those three kids are in school. They have never been sent away from, uh, from school back home and all that. 
their school fees have been paid on time and they, all that. And another achievement is our registration is coming through. And after we get our papers, amazing things will be happening. Amazing things will be happening. Yeah, it's just on. The, it's just. Uh, it's just about to embark on a whole new evolution, isn't it? And a whole yeah. new, a whole new road. Um, you know, all this to say. You know, we're coming to a close on the show. Um, I'm curious, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned through all of this? Yeah, like um, the biggest, the big lesson that I've learned on this is like, um, don't listen to people that will always pull you down. Do mm. not listen to them. Always make the right decision. And if you know that the right decision that you're making, go for it. Don't listen to people that will always want to see you fall. Because the happiness is not for you to succeed, but for you to fall. Yeah. Uh, you're full of such, of such wisdom. I, I could spend the day with you. <laughs> um, and, and what, what do you, through, through your lens and how you have seen the world, um, what do you think the world needs more of? Like, like what I can say is like, um, it doesn't matter what color, it doesn't matter your color, it doesn't, our blood is the same. You know, our blood is the same. So we just need to come together as one and pull each other, you know, help someone to go, to come to where we are. Don't, let us not laugh at them. Let, let us not call them names, but to hold hands as one because we are one, but different colors, but our blood is the same. Let's hold hands very tight and not let, don't let go so that we can help other people to join that line, yeah. That's um, absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah. And I and I think when I, I I ask that question to to a lot of my guests, I'm always curious. And I um, my answer to that is I believe the world needs more kindness. Exactly. Um, because I think what you just shared in a much more eloquent way <laughs> uh, yeah. is is what follows when you come, when you look at people and situations through love and kindness, yeah. I think it allows togetherness, connection and transformation to, to, to really happen and, and meaningful, th meaningful things really can, can take Yeah, let's not judge people. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter where you come from, which country. We didn't choose to be born in the country that we are in, we are in right now. It was like you were meant to be there. But yeah. let us not judge them by their color, but by, by where they come from. Because all of us, we need each other so that okay. we can grow as one. We do. Yeah. And so, and, and with that said, it's a beautiful way to, to end the show. I want to thank you so very much from, from the bottom thank of my heart. Thank you so Ryan. much. Thank you so much. My uh, absolute pleasure. I've been looking forward to this call for a while. So thank you for sharing you your journey. Yeah. Um, a, lot will, a lot will be happening. So, yeah. <laughs> and, I can't, and I can't wait to, to, to follow you. I would like to include all of the links, how people can reach you and how people can follow you in the show notes on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, and people can find that in a, probably 24 hours on my website, louisehreed.com. Brian will provide me with those links and I will make sure that they are in those show notes so you can find out more information about him um, and the wonderful things he's doing in the world and so um, with that said to wrap up our wonderful hour today I also want to thank you my loyal listeners and followers and remind you again information about the show my wonderful guest Brian and past guests can be found at www.louisehreed.com also, a big shout out and lots of love to my producer, Cameron Steele, at Contact Talk Radio, who without him, these shows would not be possible. And finally, I'm here to highlight and showcase people who are taking brave, bold action, whose actions have a positive impact in our world. With that said, I'd like to encourage you all to be brave, be bold, and be happy. Until next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm Louise H. Reed, wishing you an amazing day. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye.
Okay, you're clear.